The Metropolitans have built themselves a formidable margin atop the division. For a report on how they're handling their success, let's pay a visit to our friend Heidi Watney. Well, Matt, I spoke with one of the coaches before the game today, and he made their position very clear. He told me complacency is not our friend. We're not about to start celebrating our achievements because we haven't achieved anything yet. He went on to say that there are still aspects of their total game that can be improved upon, and he emphasized the importance of peaking in the fall when it counts most. Good stuff, Heidi. Thanks. Now, Ready Brad. now for the Marlins. Jorge Alfaro. As he's got Alfaro. a chance to tie this ball game up with that equalizing uh -huh. run just 90 feet away at third. No balls and a strike to count. Nothing in one count. Here it comes. No. Off the outside that time as the breaking ball can't catch the zone. And now the Marlins bullpen will swing into action as a lefty and a right hander start to get loose. Changeup gets him out in front for strike two. Now a double play ball here as this is on the ground to third. They get the force at the plate. Relay to first in time. And just like that, this side is retired. Marlins get one here on a couple of hits. Last half of the fifth coming up. The Mets lead this one four to three. Next up for New York, Dominic Smith will lead things off here in this one run contest. First pitch on its way. Line to the right side. He leaps, but he can't get it. It's down for extra bases. The relay, but it won't be in time, and it's a leadoff double. Well, that's yeah, why man. they call baseball a game of inches. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Matt. He showed some serious hops, but not serious enough. He goes up high for it with the good lead, but he just can't bring it in, and that allows him to cruise into second with a good piece of hitting. Here's the first pitch to him. Heading out towards shallow right. O'Brien is in a few steps as he takes it for the first down. Michael Conforto will get a chance with a runner in scoring position here as he'll pinch hit now with one away. He pulls this one into right. That's in there. Base hit. Smith ignores his coach. He's chugging for home. Well, he'll think better of it here, and they're at the corners now with one away. I mean, there's no seeker right now. There's a fight at the bat rack. Now Everybody bat wants Good up stop. at the plate right now. Andrew they're feeling bat. frisky. They're all pulling the trigger now early, bat. and it's working. In now is Andrelton Simmons as the first pitch to him is off the plate for a ball one and oh no hits to this point. This is line to left. Catch will be made here tagging is the runner from third and the runner from third crosses the plate. Great work to do a job right there. He's not a big power bat, so he was looking to get a fly ball to the outfield and give his guy a third a chance. He's set. Here it comes. This is flared out towards second, and this will be put away easily for the out. Robert Gesellman takes over to start now the sixth inning on the mound. Number 65, Robert. Ready once again, Peter O'Brien. He's tasked with starting the Marlins sixth. Fastball taken, but that gets the zone for a strike. Number 45. Hit weakly back to the mound. Throw to first gets him, so the leadoff man's retired here to begin the sixth. The batter. Number 65. Ready for another shot now. Gabby Guerrero. He was punched out looking at strike three last time through. Yeah, Maddie, and hopefully he got it out of his system. Especially now, he's got to bear down. He gets the two strikes in this spot, has to put the ball in play. Yeah. 
slider is in there, and now it's one and two. Is that gun reading right right there? Because that just registered at 91 miles an hour on a slider. If he's working that pitch, that's most guys' fastballs. It's going to be a long game. So the breaking ball locked him up there. Gabby Guerrero goes down for out number two in the top half. JT Riddle will get the call here as he'll hit for the pitcher. JT Riddle. The number's coming in. He's at 255, one home run and 11 RBIs. Good pitch there, had him a little out in front. Hey, from an offensive standpoint, you better get it ready. This guy is not throwing a ton of pitches. He's confident in his stuff. He's pounding the zone. He's got two quick. Well, the play's been made, and that retires the side. So they breathe. Adam Conley enters to do the pitching in the bottom of the sixth. Next for the Mets, Wilson Ramos. He singled his last time up. He's set and the pitch fouled off. The 0 and 1 delivery. Swing and a miss, and he's quickly in the hole 0 and 2. Obviously looking to pull the baseball right there out in front on that off speed pitch. This will be an interesting sequence right here to see if he slows him down even more or tries to run a heater by him. Castro has it. And there's one down now. now back. Here's the left fielder Yoenis Cespedes. Singled home run in his last time up. You know Madden every team has that one guy. And Yoenis Cespedes is that guy for the Mets. Completely changes that complexion of that Mets betting order. No balls in one strike. He came out of his shoes on that one, boys. I know he swung and missed it. We felt the breeze from up here. But if he gets that pitch again and catches it a grain low, we got action. Popped him up. Alfaro is camped under this one. And he's got it for out number two. The right fielder, number 12. Four. Here's one Lagarde now. He's got a base hit tonight. His career numbers with Adam Conley. He's got one hit in 18 at bats. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. And here's a slider that's nowhere close, and it's 1 0. Marlins have some action in the bullpen now as a right hander is up and throwing. Looked like the fastball got away from him there. It's ball two. I'm seeing him just a little too amped up out there right now. That's common with hard throwers like him. Running a blazing fastball up there is great, but if you can't harness it, what good does it do you? Two and one to Juan Ligares. Hit high in the air down the right field line. O'Brien will reach out with one hand to make the catch on the move and so the batting order turns over now and set to go John Birdie. It's been an 0 for 2 effort for him to this point. Even though we're moving into the back end of this game they're only down by a couple of runs. You know that old slogan of bloop and a blast. They could certainly use that right now. Big swing and a miss at the fastball and he's behind in the count 0 and 2. If you're going to catch up to a high fastball like that. It's all about getting that front foot down in enough time to allow your hands to start moving forward. He was way too late there. And the throw to first is in time, so the leadoff now man is gone here to start inning shortstop. number seven. Miguel. Up next from Miami, Miguel Rojas. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Yank the slider across that time, laid off for a ball. Three runs, seven hits, and two errors thus far on the Miami line score. Count even now at one and one. The one one is taken for strike two. Probably better that he let that pitch go anyway. After seeing a lively fastball in the pitch before, it's pretty hard to sit back enough on a well thrown changeup. Two and two the count. This is hit high in the air out toward left center. Broxton's under it, and he brings it in for the second out of the inning. Now batting, the third baseman, 
Digging Brian. in and looking for more. Brian Anderson. Lifetime matchup numbers with Gesellman. He's one for five. Good bite to the slider and he takes strike one. And there's ball one. Swing and a little blooper to center. In comes Broxton. He's there to make the play, and that'll retire the side. One, two, three, go the Marlins. They're still down 5-3. Riding in, Robinson Cano. The third baseman, Robinson Cano. And now pitch on the way. Reaches out, but he can't get it. It's nothing in one. Now a fastball as he has to lean out of the way there. Most good pitchers know that they have to work inside and sometimes even come off the plate to keep hitters from getting comfortable up there. I think that was part of the intent with that last pitch. Little chopper back to the mound. And there's one away. The first baseman, number 22. Digging in to try Dominic. it again, Dominic Smith. Perhaps he can drive another one out of the park just like he did back in the second. He's ready. Here's the 0 1. Outside at 94, one ball and one strike. One and two to Dominic Smith. Five runs, eight hits, one error in the game for the Mets thus far. Line towards center field. So he'll add one to his total as that falls in. He's got three hits in this one. Dan, with that single, he's now three now quarters of the way to hit for the fielder. cycle. Toughest yeah. one still on the shelf, though. Locked he's got to get a triple. Yeah, that you said it, Dero. That's one of those that's either got to hit right down the line or one of those tweeners in the gap. He has enough speed, so if he can find a gap or find one down the line, maybe he can do it, and he's going to at least get one more at bat in this one. And that'll bring in the speedy Keon Broxton. Now a ball lined to the left side. But this will be a foul ball. His career numbers with Adam Conley. He's hitless in three at bats. A one pitch on its way. Line drive to center field. And that'll get down for a base hit. I don't know how he got to that fastball right there. That looked like the old Tommy Hawk approach back in the 60s and 70s getting to that one. Jed Lowry will get the call to pinch hit here and he'll find he has a couple of runners aboard with only one out in the inning. Heading out towards shallow right. O'Brien is under it. He's got it, and there are two down now. And no tag at second. He'll head back there with two away now. The batter, number two. Big Good spot stop. here. First and Andrew second. Third. Two men gone. And standing in, one of the best two-strike hitters in baseball, Andrelton Simmons. He comes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. Here's a little chopper up the middle. Backhanded. On to first, and the Mets are going to come up empty. Jerry's Familia has been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. Number 27, Jerry. And now is Pedro Alvarez. Lifetime against Familia. He's gone three for six. Starts him out with a slider for a strike. First baseman, Pedro Alvarez. Struck him out. 
Well, we've seen some really good pitching from these guys in this one. The bullpen has looked sharp and have backed up a nice effort turned in by the starter. These days, pitching has become a full staff effort, and I've been impressed with the job these guys have done so far. Lifted in the air out towards left center. Broxton's under it. He's got it, and there are two down now. Now back. Digging in once again, Jorge Alfaro. He was a double play victim last time around. Yeah, rolling into a two ball will eat at you for the rest of the game at least. So you know he wants to make up for it right here. Ready with the nothing in one pitch. And boy, was he ever fooled on that pitch. It's 0-2 now. For the most part, he's looked really locked in at the plate. And we'll have to leave it there as this is strike three, and that will retire the side. Miami down in order. Still a two-run deficit. It's five to three. Tehran Guerrero is on to pitch out of the bullpen Miami. in the bottom half of the eighth. Number 56. Tyron Guerrero. Now at the plate, Jeff McNeil. Hit the ball pretty well in his last at bat, but it resulted Lydia, in a line out. Yeah, he hit it hard. The That's all you can ask. You can't Number control six. the results sometimes, Maddie. Just unlucky with the placement. First offering on its way. Grounder down the line at third. Uh, this gets foul. It's 0 and 1. Guerrero is a guy that you'll notice attacks hitters with a high velocity slider. Not the old sweeper. He really fires it in there and snaps off big numbers. Slap hard the opposite way. And he stretches out and left, but this is off his glove. Chalk up another multi-hit game for this guy. He is absolutely on it. fire. Catcher. He's been on a nice hot Go streak there. as of late, and I don't see it Bravo. ending anytime soon. the catcher Wilson Ramos and a wild pitch here as this one's to the backstop throw down to second here is by him and into center field and they won't get him as he's able to advance from first to third on what would certainly be scored a throwing error One oh count here it is heading out towards shallow right for Brian sprinting after it he makes the catch here comes the runner from third and the run is in to score on the sack fly as they double things up to lead it six to three here's your one assessment base is empty and one away following the sack fly line drive to center field and he will make the play out there and there are two away now. Well, this no one was fielder. squared Number up pretty 12. good, but just like pitchers Whoa. give up hits on well-executed pitches, right. batters make outs on balls they couldn't have hit much better. First pitch of the at-bat on its way. Swing and a liner. Foul. Bases are empty here with two men out. Another one fouled off, and he's quickly behind 0-2. Wind up and the 0 2 pitch. Didn't stay on top of the slider that time as it misses high. Hey, great take on that slider away right there. But I'm thinking in that situation, that pitcher's got to execute a little bit better. That was almost a non competitive pitch. Being outside, you could almost have let that one go right out of his hand. Hey, they don't all have to be beautiful. They just have to be base the hits. That's exactly what that was. Soft liner Robin into left Jeff. field. Nice job. Tonto. Now at the plate, Robinson Cano struggling so far in this one and looking to erase his 0 for 4 ball game right here. Here comes the first pitch. Ligaris run. He swings and misses. Throw down. And he'll be tagged out at second base. 
trying to get into scoring position, but instead the inning is over. Another look at the throwdown that results in a third out on the bases. Don't go anywhere. More Tuesday night baseball after this. Your Edwin Diaz please. comes on from the now pen, hoping to finish this one pass. off here in the top of the Number ninth. 39. Edwin. Diaz. At the plane, Peter O'Brien. He was retired via the ground ball last time up. They look like they're up against it here. Right down three on the road, trying to come back against the closer. Strike one to start the at bat. Comes back with a good change up there, and it's quickly 0 and 2. Looks to me like he's trying to make adjustments pitch to pitch up there at the plate, but he's looked completely thrown off so far. Late on the first one, way out front on the second. The one two to short, hit hard. Throw on to first for the out, and that is how the ninth inning gets underway. Now so the leadoff man gone to start 55. the top of the ninth as we take a look at league saves leaders entering play. And as you can see there, he in fact leads the NL in that category. Hit high and deep out to left. Cespit is going back at the track, and that one is gone. A solo shot here to left, number 10 for him on the year. And they cut the gap here. It's now 6 to 4. That, my friends, is a cardinal sin for any closer. You can't give up the long ball. Good thing for him, he still has the lead. We'll see now if he can rebound and Maybe actually keep it. Neil Go Walker ahead. will grab a bat and hit for the pitcher here. For Miami. Number 18. Neil Walker. And he fouls this one off. Right. That's in there. And he's deep in the hole now, 0-2. That pitch looked like it could have been a little high, but he's been calling that pitch all night. Oh. Kind of rough for a pinch hitter, but I'm sure his teammates let him know that's where the zone has been. Still hanging with him. Another good swing to keep it going. He was able to foul that one off, but you could tell he was definitely late. That breaking ball, the pitch before that heater right there, definitely threw his timing off. Broxton is there now, and he has it to gone. Now batting, left fielder. So the lineup flips over and digging Birdie. in, John Birdie. He comes to the plate as the last chance for his side. Two out here in the ninth. In there, and it's 0-1. Now a swing and a ground ball. This should do it. Taken in by Simmons. On the first. And that's your ball game. Guys, it seems like this team just refuses to ever let a downward trend get any kind of traction. Well, that's why they are where they are, Matt. They've been pretty unflappable when tested all season long. It tells you something about the character of this team, the, the way they respond to adversity. This team dropped a couple of games, so they upped their energy a bit and got right back on track. It's the trait of a champion, and this team has been looking like a real contender all season long. The Mets went through a bit of a slump recently but seem to have weathered it and have begun to trend upwards again. Yeah Matty they have stabilized and fortunately for them they did so before compromising their division lead too terribly. They've been looking to add some padding to that cushion they had and regain their position at the top of the standings. Here's the catcher Wilson Ramos previous history with Ian Kennedy he has a three for 12 line he's taken him deep once ready to deliver here's the first pitch can't find the zone there as he lays off the breaking ball and now that Royals bullpen will get busy as we see both the southpaw and a right hander get loose 
And he fires in a strike this time to make it one ball and one strike. You know, if I'm the hitter right here, I'm like, okay. You want to come get some early in the count? I was about to wait you out, but now game on. Oh, shaking his head on that knuckle curve. One and two. Grounder hit hard down the first baseline. A dive, but it's off his glove. And he'll flip it to the pitcher covering for the out. Well, if you're going to bobble the ball, you have to hope it's when a guy is lumbering down the base pass. He's no speedster, so that was a good job to stay calm and make the recovery throw. One away now for the Mets in the sixth, and that'll bring up a former gold glover. Here's Juan Lagares. And a good fastball from Kennedy as he gets ahead with strike one. That's taken. Now it's 0 and 2. Good breaking ball right there. Good hard slider to count now 0 and 2. He's getting deep into the outing, but his slider is still staying sharp. He doesn't look at all like he's starting to tire. He looks as good now as he did early on in the game. On its way, the 0 2 pitch. This is lined to left. And there to take it in is Gordon for round number two. Boy, talk about that getting into right some rough field. luck. That was an absolute Supporto. bullet to the outfield that gets caught, and he would have represented the tying run. In now, Michael Conforto. As the first pitch to him is in there for a called strike one. He's 0 for 2 in the ballgame so far. And that misses 1-1. One and one. Into right field, that's a base hit. Hey, after that base now, knock right there, he's the in the double digits, Dero. That's a 10 game hitting streak. Oh, you talking about double digits, Dan? Now it's getting firm. We're seeing the batting average go up, we're seeing the homers go up, we're seeing the RBIs go up. Everything is moving north. Here's Robbie Cano now. As he'll take a look at a strike right down the middle, it's 0-1. Previous history with Ian Kennedy, he's got three base hits in 16 tries. One and one. He's obviously been very impressive on the mound in this one. And I think the big reason why is his ability to stay out of the middle of the zone. That's kind of obvious, but it's clear to me that even when he misses his spots, he's not missing over the plate. One and two now. Working for the punch out and the offering. Hit out towards second. Merrifield picks it up. Throw to first will get him easily, and the side is retired. Mets strand one. They're down 2 1. Next will be the designated hitter, Leading Brian up. Goodwin. He was a ground out victim last time hitter. up. Brian. Here's the pitch. Good win. Pulled high in the air out to right field. Conforto on the move. He gets to it and makes the catch for the first out. Now that. So next to the plate for the Jorge. Royals, Jorge Bonifacio, one for two. He grounded out first time up and followed that with a base hit. Here's a pop up now. Smith waits on it and he brings it in for the second out of the inning. Now batting third base. Here now is Chesler Cuthbert. It was an RBI single for him in his last plate appearance. He's ready. Here's the first offering, and he takes a cold strike. 0 and 1. That's one of those pitches you just float over the plate. 99% of the time, the batter is taking at least the first pitch after two straight one pitch out. So, and he'll get there in plenty of time to put this one away, and that ends the inning. Some of our nation's young minds and future leaders here in attendance. Yikes! Back with more on this fine Saturday night following this. Riding in once again, Jed Lowry. Singled home or run in his last time up. This thing's far from yeah. over, even though we're moving wow. into the back end of this game. 
only down by one. All they need to do is get this leadoff guy, and they're an extra base hit away from tying this thing up. And this is hit hard to the right side, but foul. The wind up and the 0 2 pitch. Low of the fastball here in the dirt, even. It's ball one. Not a bad pitch right there on 0 and 2, a fastball. And I think as a hitter right now, you have to continue to go up there. There's a swing and a high, deep drive headed for the right field corner. And as Mets fans have heard before, that ball's out. It's a solo shot for Jed Lowry, number 28 on the season, and the Mets have come back to tie this one at two. Yeah, he's been producing at the plate all year, so this should come as a surprise to nobody. But just because it's expected doesn't mean it's any less impressive. One swing, and we are tied. The first base into the box now, Dominic Smith. Dominic. As the first pitch misses to him, it's ball one. 0 for 2 from him so far in this one. And a slider stays outside and he falls behind 2 0. From the windup, the 2 0 pitch. 3 and 0 now. Walks are never good, but they're especially bad news late in games like this. It seems like they always come back to bite you. And he lays off. Ball four. Now the potential go-ahead run is on base here. Digging in, Keon Broxton. It was a flyout for him in his last trip. And with his speed, he's one of those rare guys who you'd actually like to see keep the ball on the ground. You can't beat out a fly ball in this game. Ground ball foul down the left side. Go-ahead runs aboard here at first with nobody out. On the ground to short. Could this be two? There's Merrifield on the first, and you can forget about the go-ahead run being on base. He's erased on the double play. That's not the guy you're going to see doubled up very often, so that was a quick turn at second base. Good transfer and a strong throw. In now is Andrelton Simmons. So go after the first pitch and bounce it into foul territory. He's hitless in his two at bats so far. The wind up and the 0 1. That misses wide. One ball and one strike. Sent on the ground out to second. Merrifield brings it in on the first, and this will remain a tie ball game as the inning is over. But the tying run comes across here, so it looks like this could be a wire job. Getting late, stretch time now in Kansas City, and we are tied 2 2. Stepping in, Alex Gordon. Last time through was a base hit. The left fielder, Alex. First pitch of the at bat. There's a fastball on the inner third taken for a strike. Hey, this guy's pitching pretty well as we're rolling into the late innings. It's interesting, though. His first pitch strike percentage, less than 40% so far in this one. And here's a slider strike three called, and that'll be the first out of the inning. The center fielder, number six. Billy. Here's Billy Hamilton standing in. Hamilton. His career line against Wheeler. He's gone two for eight. Third baseman in tight, protecting the bunt, the first pitch. Tries to catch him napping, but he missed the bunt attempt. Strike one. Just bad execution on the batter right there. He got an opportunity to get a pitch that he knows he can get down nine times out of ten. Wasn't able to come through right there. 
Two runs, seven hits, one error so far for Kansas City. Fouled away. He's ready. Here's the 0 2 pitch. Weak rounder back to the mound. And there are two away now. Now batting. Good stop. Hanging in now for Kansas City. Alberto Mondesi. He's got a hit in three at bats to this point. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Fastball taken a little under the letters, called a strike. Well, that's a tough pitch to take right there, right down the middle. But I think that happens when you're. And this ball is crushed deep down the right field line. And that nearly broke our tie, but instead it's a foul ball. And a fastball swung on and missed, and the side is retired. KC down in order. Score remains 2-2. Two to two. Willie Peralta please. will come on now, now as he'll be appearing in his 45th game this Number year. 43. Really? Here's Echeverria now. He's hitless in three at bats to this point. Leading off for the Mets, the second baseman, Adain. Here's Echeverria. the first pitch to him. And he lays off a pitch in there for the first strike. Line to the right side. And that's going to be a base hit. So a good start is the possible go ahead run is aboard to start the eight. Outside of home runs, nothing fires me up more than watching a good baseball player drive the ball at the opposite field. Talking about hitting the inside half of the baseball, that's exactly what happened right there. And when we say inside half of the baseball, imagine the ball coming to a complete stop halfway between home plate and the pitcher's mound. And then cutting that baseball in half and highlighting the inside half. That's where you're trying to take the knob of your bat or the hands to that spot and carve the inside half of the baseball with power. Oh, on the ground is short. Could this be two? One there. On to first, the double play. Now back. So base is empty now after the double play. And coming forward, the veteran outfielder, Juan Ligaris. Here comes the first pitch. Pitch is popped up. And the off balance throw is right there for the third out. And a high degree of difficulty on that one as the side is retired. Mets go down quickly. Score remains deadlocked at 2-2. Blake Whit Merrifield. He'll step in trying to do something about this 2 2 tie. First pitch coming. Here it is. And this pitch is taken on the inner half for strike one. I mean, the obvious key right now is the movement on his two seamer. He's able to spot it up in when he has to, and he's able to go back door. Behind 0 2 now. Popped him up. Smith has a play one out the batter, the pitcher. here's the catcher no, Salvador no. Perez he's oh, 0 for 2 man. thus far in this one he's ready here's the first offering this one's outside quite a bit off the plate that time right here he's looking to get himself into a good hitters count so he can take a rip and maybe give his team the lead he certainly has the power Here's the 1-1. One, one. This is lined to left. And that'll get down out there near the wall. And he will beat the throw into second as he slides in safely with a one-out double. Well, that's a nice base hit right there. Way to break up the rhythm. That was almost eight in a row. This guy was starting to get his bearings about him on the mound. Had to break it up. 
In now, Ryan O'Hearn. Been a rough go of things at the plate for him so far, but his guys are looking for him to change that right here. Yeah, nothing better than coming through for the boys in a tight game, Matt, especially when you're kind of due to do something productive. Now time is called, and this could very well be to buy a few more pitches for those relievers. Here's the first pitch to him. And a good spot for that pitch is it's chopped foul. The 0-1 pitch. Fastball taken, but that gets the zone for a strike. This is going to be an interesting at bat. I think he has to be pitching for a strike out here, so we'll see what kind of sequence he uses. Go ahead, runs in scoring position here with one away. Struck him out. Struck him out again, I should say. His third punch out of the game. That was a big strike out there, guys. Now the best it. pitchers have the, the ability to strike hitter. guys out when oh, they yeah. really need to. And that Good second win. out was really important at this point of the game. Could be something we look back on later when the game's over. Next batter to the plate, Brian Goodwin. It's his job to get something into the outfield and give that go-ahead run a chance to score from second. And there's the fourth wide one, so he's aboard on the intentional walk. Brett Phillips right will be summoned now Jorge. to be the pinch runner. And that'll bring up Jorge Bonifacio. He's working on a one for three thus far. And here's a fastball called for strike one. Looking at his lifetime numbers, Bonifacio is slugging just a little over 400. Not a huge threat, but he can certainly square one up on occasion. Here's the 0-2. Oh, he went for the knockout pitch that time, but a good eye, one and two. A great take on that slider away right there. But I'm thinking in that situation, that pitcher's got to execute a little bit better. That was almost a non-competitive pitch. Being outside, you could almost have let that one go right out of his hand. And the two-out threat will not come to pass as the inning is over. Royal Strand a pair. And this game is still tied at two and two. Your Brian Flynn lead. will be on the mound now to start the ninth the inning, and his job will be keeping the Double ball game three. tied until the bottom Ryan. half. Whoa. Settling in now, Michael Conforto. He's got a hit in three at bats to this point. Right fielder, number 30, Michael Conforto. First delivery to him on the way. Off we go in the ninth as the first pitch misses for ball one. Hit down the line at first. And this will be a foul ball as the first baseman makes a Herculean effort to make the stop. Easy there, Cha-Cha. Now the one and one pitch. Takes a pitch for strike number two. To two balls and two strikes now. Here now the 2 2. Still hanging with him. Another good swing to keep it going. The 2 2 one more time. It is looked at and the count moves full. On deck, the lefty Robinson Cano. And he lays off, ball four. Now the potential go-ahead run is on base here. Man, when the game is tied, the last thing you can afford to do is walk the leadoff hitter. Got to focus on getting that ground ball now. Here's the first pitch. There's the fastball that gets the lower part of the zone called for a strike. Great spot with that pitch down and away. He'll be fine coming out of the bullpen in this one if he can keep hitting that spot. And he misses with it one and one. One ball, one strike. No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. Sometimes you got to be aggressive offensively, but sometimes you just let the pitcher dig his own grave. Patience and discipline seem to be the way to go right here. And it misses three and one now. 
Got to find a way to get back in his zone. I know you're in danger of losing both to walks, but certainly don't miss over the heart of the plate and have this guy gap one, or even worse, hit a two-run homer. And he misses with it, ball four, so the potential go-ahead run moves into scoring position now. Number four. Yeah. So it's first and second now. Nobody out. And up next, the switch hitting Stanford product, Jed Lowry. Yeah, now this guy flexed his muscles on that last at bat. We heard that he has good power. That last bomb had to go well over 400 feet. He hit it a long way. With runners in scoring position this season, Lowry is hitting over 350 up in the high 300s. You want to talk about having a career season, Matty. This guy's batting average is through the roof, one of the best. Oh, just a sec now as that ball finds its way into the outfield, a base hit. And the go-ahead run will move up to third and wisely the hold there with nobody two. out. Dominant. Boy, Dero, we're looking yeah. at a big inning right here with that single. Bases are loaded, yet no runs have scored in this inning. Yeah, and that's exactly what that pitcher wants you to think. You have to eliminate the noise, Dan. Just try and drive in the guy from third base. Don't put pressure on yourself that you have to get everyone in with one swing of the bat. Pass the baton and keep the line moving. Stepping in now, Dominic Smith. Catch made here in medium deep right center, and the runner is breaking from third. And the go-ahead runs in to score as they break the tie. It's now three to two. And that'll bring in the speedy Keon Broxton. He was a double play victim last time around. Yeah, and the defense is thinking, give it to us again and we'll roll it over all day long. Don't think that's not in his head right now as he steps to the plate. No balls and a strike to count. Cano over at second. Lowry at first, one gone. And he couldn't get him to chase the 0-2 fastball. It's one and two. The one-two. Now here's one hit in the air to the right side. Merrifield takes charge out there and he stays with it for the second out. The back, number two. Now back to the top of the lineup, Andrelton. stepping in, Andrelton Simmons. He was retired via the ground ball last time up. Looking to keep this a one-run game, the pitch. And he lays off there, 1-0. In the center field, and that's going to get down for a base hit. Cano blows through the stop sign, headed for home. And a good throw will wind up holding that runner at third, so the bases become up loaded now back. with two gone. The second baseman, Adani Echevarria. Stepping in, Adani Echevarria. He steps in off a base hit in his last at-bat. First pitch of the at-bat on its way. Ball hit to the left side, but taken in out there at short. And a shake of the head as that ball was hit hard, but it'll leave the bases loaded. Mets played a run on a couple of hits. We'll see eight, nine, and one due up in the bottom of inning number nine. It's the Mets three and the Royals two. Ladies Edwin Diaz is the man called please. on to close this one now and earn a save the in the ninth. Number 39, Edwin Diaz. Digging in, Chesler Cuthbert. He'll start things out against the closer, Edwin Diaz. Here comes the first pitch. Swing and a miss that time. It's 0-1. It's becoming more and more common in today's game to see relievers like this that can run it up there close to 100 miles per hour. But it's so fun to watch it. He blew it right by him there. Ready with the 1-1 pitch. Swing and a miss on the fastball, and it's 1-2. Boy, he center cut that fastball. It comes in in the high 90s, but that's a dangerous location, no matter how hard you're throwing. The 2-2. And it's fouled away. Rip down the first baseline. But this is going to be a foul ball as that keeps things at 2-2. Two and two. Fastball didn't miss by much, and it's a full count now, three and two. 
you do not want to walk the eight hole hitter. It just opens up so many options. Do we bump him over to second with the nine hole hitter? Do we try and play for that big rally with the top of the order coming up? This is a huge pitch. You can't allow this guy to walk. You can't ask for anything more than getting the leadoff man on right there. It brings the go-ahead run to the plate. He's in position to do some damage. It'd be interesting to see how the manager plays this one. Time called here as with the potential tying run aboard, they'll make the move to get a little more speed out there. Here's the left fielder Alex Gordon, head to head against Edwin Diaz. Just a couple of matchups, no hits in two at bats. Throw goes to first here, so it works just as they drew it up, and now the possible tying run is in the scoring position at second. So the Royals batting order turns over and set to go. Billy Hamilton, they'll go to work on getting that tying run home from second. Lifted down the line in left. And this will wind up a foul ball. That's taken. Now it's 0 and 2. Dozier, the runner at second with one away. Looking for the K. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, and they'll dodge a major bullet that time. Two away. Got him with a good high fastball there. Danny, we see a lot of that pitch in strikeout situations these days. What makes it so effective? I think, Matt, what makes it such a tough pitch is you're changing eye levels. That fastball up looks so enticing to hit that you think you see that ball as a hitter. Do you think you can drive it? But it's really hard to get on top of that good high hard fastball. Trying to hold the lead. Here's the delivery. Taken called strike two. And now they're down to their final strike tonight. He certainly hasn't been the aggressor in this at bat. Two straight takes. So now we'll see if he can change his approach and battle up. He's got it. And the Mets have taken the first two games of this series on the road as this one is over. So the Mets get the win. And guys, this team seems to be firing on all cylinders again. Yeah, they've got a bit of a winning streak going right now. I think it's an opportunity to kind of get this team's confidence back coming out of one of the few low points of their season. I look for them to get back to being the team we saw for most of the season before that recent lull. Well, this premier matchup between two current division leaders has so far lived up to its billing, guys. It certainly has, Matt. And it's not hard to imagine that these two impressive teams could potentially meet up again in October. So it's fun to get a look at them clashing here and sizing each other up. And next will be the versatile Tyler Naquin. He now was back. set packing on the strikes in his last trip. Yeah, Tyler. Matty, and hopefully he got it out of his system. Especially now, he's got to bear down. He gets the two strikes in this spot, has to put the ball in play. Runner! First delivery to him on the way. In there, now the throw. And he is out at second. Caught stealing to end the inning. Another look at the throw down that results in a third out on the bases. The three of us return with more Wednesday Night Baseball after this. James Point is on to pitch out of now the bullpen in the bottom the half of the eighth. Number 50. James. In now is Andrelton Simmons. 0 for 2 with a walk for him so far. Leading up for the Mets. The shortstop. Andrelton. Simmons. First pitch coming. Here it is. Hit hard on the ground to second. Scooped up on the backhand. And that's the first out. Now about it. Jeff Number McNeil three. will be the next to take a turn. He was a ground out victim last time up. First offering on its way. 
Swing and a ball chop foul down the left side. The 0 1 on its way. Now a line drive that's going to be caught out there at short. Had him played perfectly that time, and there are two gone now. So two are gone in the Mets half of the eighth, and next is the catcher, Wilson Ramos. Now the pitch. A little tardy on that swing as it's well wide at first. Point. A previous member of the Houston Astros. He was acquired via trade last year. Yeah, this guy's fully settled in with this ball club right now. Knows what the manager and coaching staff expect from him. Is not. And we'll have to leave it there as the play is made here to end the inning. Down in order go the Mets. They lead it two to one. Edwin Diaz please. comes on from the now pen, hoping to finish the this one off here in the top Number of the ninth. Edward. Edward. In now for Cleveland, Tyler Naquin is working on a one for three thus far. Hey, it's never easy scoring because runs against a closer, Tyler. but this lineup is setting up perfectly right now as the leadoff hitter leads off this inning. On its way, the 0-1 pitch. This is swung on and bounced to McNeil at second. Throw on to first for the out, and that is how the ninth inning gets underway. Now batting. Left Here's Leonis Martin. Leone. It was a two-bagger for him in his last at bat. Here comes the first pitch. Try to bunt for a base hit here as he gets this one down. On the barehanded attempt, gets by him here, and that ought to go as a bunt single. Now batting. Third baseman. Jose. Striding in for the Indians, Jose Ramirez, head to head against Edwin Diaz. He's 0 for 4. From the stretch, swinging a ball hit softly on the ground. The 0 1 pitch. That's in there, and he's deep in the hole now, 0 and 2. Not too often you see a changeup come across at 88 miles an hour on the gun. Still effective when you're throwing a fastball in the high 90s, though. So he ran the fastball by him for the punch out. Jose the Ramirez goes the down for the second out, That's and the now they're down to their final the try. Next will be the cleanup hitter, Francisco Lindor. He'll be looking for something he could drive into the gap and drive home that time run from first. And a high strike to begin the at bat. It's 0 and 1. You know, you look at this hitter, he doesn't care about being down 0 1. He doesn't care about having two strikes with him. He's got the utmost confidence in his ability to work back into the count and get him something over the heart of the plate. Fouled off. Now, this crowd of over 38,000 on their feet. Martin leads off first with a pair of outs in the inning. Hit down the third baseline. But this will be a foul ball, and it's still 0-2. Last strike now for Cleveland. Indian shortstop behind 1-2 and two in the count. Well, you don't want to get caught looking for the final out. That's a tough pitch to lay off. Impressive that he did. Two balls and two strikes to count to Francisco Lindor. Has him down to their final strike. Here it comes. This is pulled into right. Confederate is there. Makes the catch and the ball game is over. So that ends what was quite an entertaining matchup of top dogs here, guys. Yeah, when two division leaders face off, it is like two alpha dogs staring at each other. Unfortunately, there's only going to be room for one at the top of the pack. But it's fun to get a peek at what it looks like for these two contenders to tangle head to head. Yeah, this was a fun matchup, and I have a ton of respect for both of these two teams. But what really matters is what comes of these two teams later in the season when championships are won and lost. I want to see what these teams have become at that point.